Thank you very much. Let us all open to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40, starting from verse 1. Genesis chapter 40, verse 1. It came to pass after these things and that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord and the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers and the chief butler and the chief baker. And so he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison and the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served and them, and so they were in custody for a while. And then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream, and both of them, each man's dream, in one night, and each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. And so he asked the first officers so who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house, saying, why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, We each have had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And so Joseph said to them, and do not interpretations belong to God and tell them to me please and then the chief of butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him behold in my dream a vine was before me and in the vine were three branches it was as though it budded its blossoms shot forth and its clusters brought forth white grapes. And then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, and this is the interpretation of it, and the three branches are three days. And now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. And but remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me, make a mention of me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this house. And for indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews, and also I have done nothing here, and that and they should put me into the dungeon. Kwa sababu hakika na libiwa kutoka inchi ya brania, wala hapana hapa, when the chief baker and saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. And 
Natazama ziko nyongo tatu za mikate myeupe juu ya kicho changu. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. Na katika ungo wa juu mlikuwa na kila namna chakula kwa Pharaoh, kazi za mokaji, ndege wakavila katika ungo juu ya kicho changu. So Joseph and Saran said that this is the interpretation of it, and the three baskets are three days. Yusuf wakajibu wakasema tafsiri yake ndio hii, nyungo tatu ni siku tatu. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Baada ya siku tatu, Pharaoh atakinua na kukondolea kicho chako na kutundika juu ya mti na ndege watakula nyama yako. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, and that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up and the head of the chief of butler and of the chief of baker among his servants. Ikawa siku ya tatu, siku ya kuzaliwa kwa ke farao, akawafanya karamu watuma wake wote, akakinua kicho cha mkua wenye shaji na cha mkua wakaji, miongoni mwa watuma wake. And then he restored the chief butler to his fellowship again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Akamrudisha mkua wenye shaji katika kazi yake ya kunyesha, na kampa farao kikombe mkononi mwake. And but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Bali akamtundika mkua wakaji kama Yusufu alivu wafasiria. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Lakini huyo mkua wanye shaji haku mkumbuka Yusufu alimsahau. Up to verse 23. Hadi msari wa 23. Last week after Sunday service. Juma lio pita bada ibada ya jumapili. I had a chance to... I didn't know that Muea was a famous place for rice. And so Muea Church, they finished the construction, so we went to open the church. And then they put me a bag of rice in my car. I didn't know until we were in the car and the pastor next to me told me, Pastor Mwea is a place of rice. Na siku jua hata tulipo kuwa ndani ya gari ya kasema mchungaji mwea ni sema ambayo ni ya mchele kwa wingi. And afterwards we went to Kimahuri. Na baada ya hapo tukaenda Kimahuri. And I didn't know where Kimahuri was. Na siku jua Kimahuri mahala ambapo ipo. If I knew I probably did not go there on that day. Na kama ninge jua sini afikiri singe enda uko. Because we were climbing and climbing and climbing. And it's not even a paved road. It was very bumpy. And we started to climb Mount Kenya. I was thinking, oops, we came to the wrong place. And we arrived there around between 7.30 and 8. Especially around at 7 o'clock, it started to get dark and everything was just pitch black. I couldn't see anything but the stars. Wow, these people, they live very close to God. They must be so spiritual. So with the car, we were climbing and climbing. I couldn't find a house but I found like seven, eight churches on the way while climbing the mountain. And finally we went to our church. We had a service and a fellowship with our brothers and sisters there. And then uh, we came to uh, Nyeri. And so at Nyeri we were uh, you know, sleeping in a hotel. Actually, especially on that day, I wanted to stay alone. There are many things that I really wanted to ask God and also pray before God. I really wanted to speak to God. And that night, I didn't care about asking God because I was so sleepy so I slept. The next day in the morning I woke up and I asked God God, 
Why are you putting me in this situation? Why have you allowed these uh, problems in my life? Why have you allowed that problem in my life? And then God did not answer. I was like, what am I supposed to do? I didn't want to come back to Nairobi until he answers. I also had some article to write. And so I opened my computer and then I began to write the article. Actually, uh, in my life, uh, you cannot remove uh, Genesis uh, chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40 is uh, the Bible that has uh, given me a turning point of my spiritual life. And so I opened the computer and it was uh, time for me to write about Genesis chapter 40. As I was meditating upon Genesis chapter 40 and thinking about Genesis chapter 40, it took me about uh, three hours of close to four hours to finish the article. For three hours, for four hours, as I was thinking about Genesis chapter 40, I felt like God, he was giving me the fellowship inside of my heart. Everyone, as you live your spiritual life, do you only believe in the Bible? Do you only believe in the Word? Or sometimes so do you mix the Word and with your thoughts? I only believe in the Word. Can you raise your hand? I mean, I believe only in the Word. But it's embarrassing to raise my hand. Who is telling you that you are embarrassed? You are already following your thought, right? One more time. I am only believing in the word. I only believe in the word. No one. Found one. Two. She just put her hand down. No one. Some people might think like this. <coughs> Pastor, how can you only believe in the word? Sometimes so you got to follow your thought, isn't it? How can you only believe in the word? Even that is your thought. Because when we receive salvation, <laughs> How did you receive salvation? Only believing in the word. So, everyone, only believing in the word. Is that possible or is that impossible? It's very possible. But Satan has to put a thought inside of us. Hey, only believing in the word? That is impossible. How can one only believe in the word? Then think about how you receive salvation. When you receive salvation, you did not mix the word and your thoughts. You did not mix the word and what you see. You did not mix the word and what you word and what you feel. Everyone, is that true? When we receive salvation, we only believed in the word. Everyone, is that true? But now, as we receive salvation, we don't only believe in the word. We mix the word and my thoughts. Everyone, let us all open to Genesis chapter 40. When you look here, it explains about the butler and the baker. Now here, in verse 1, it came to pass after these things and that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord 
the king of Egypt. Ikawa baada ya mambo hayo mnyoshaji wa mfalme wa Misri na mkaji wake wakamkosa bwana wao mfalme wa Misri. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief Baker. Farao akawagadabikia makida wake wawili, mkuwa wanyeshaji na mkuwa wakaji. Right now, these servants, they offended their Lord. Sasa hawa tumishi wameza kumkosea buwana wao. And he says, Farao was angry. Na inasema Farao aligadabika. Pharaoh was angry. Pharaoh aligadabika. The king he was angry at these two people Hui. of the butler and the baker. Huyu mfama alikuwa magadabika juu ya humyeshaji na mokaji. What has kindled the fire of the king? Je, huyu mfama mfama. What did I say? Je, nisema nini? What has kindled the fire? Yes, what has set the fire? And of the king. What what have they done? To make the king Pharaoh to become angry. Is there anyone who can think about it? Everyone, this Bible is so amazing. This Bible, it doesn't explain in details. It doesn't explain about the people's heart. You know, their feelings, their emotions. But as you continuously read, you read it one times, five times, ten times, twenty times. As you continuously read down, in the in the story, you can discover the heart of God. Everyone, when you read the novel, you're so touched, right? You're moved. Why? You can only be moved when you feel the heart of the author. In the same, same way, as you continuously read the Bible, in the Bible, you can feel the heart of God. Everyone here, the king, represents God. And here, the butler and the baker is talking about us. The Bible is written very easy way. In this way called comparisons. If there is the prodigal son, then there is the first son. If there is the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, then there are those people who accused this woman. If there is Jacob, then there is Esau. Here now we have the butler and the baker. So that we can compare their two lives. So that we can compare their two spiritual lives. Everyone, what have they done to get the king angry at them? What do you think they have done? Is there anyone who can guess? Anyone? What have they done? What did they do? To get the king so angry? And that they entered the prison. What have they done? Do you know anyone? I have a prize for you. Not, not the second dish, right? It's a special prize. Anyone who can guess? What has the king of the fire to make this king to become angry? Anyone? I have a prize for you. Oh, yes. Sister. What is king of the fire? They went against the heart of the king. They went against the heart of the king. Anyone else? Anyone else? They didn't believe in the word of the king. 
He didn't believe in the word of the king. You were in my class of Mahanaim Bible College. <laughs> Our newly made deacon. Let's see whether he's qualified or not, right? What has made the king to become angry? The butler and the baker trusted in themselves. Wow. I think you are qualified. <laughs> Yes, that there is a reason why God has made him a deacon, right? Because they trust, trusted in themselves. Don't trust in yourself because you got it right, okay? Yes. Everyone, what has the kind of the fire of the king? Butler and the baker, they trusted in themselves. But what is the sin of the butler and the baker? They trusted in themselves. Imagine, you know, they are working in the palace, making the wine, making the bread for the king in the palace. Is there any way that you will not trust in yourself? Because I am the best. That's why the king has chosen me to make his wine. Because I am the best cook. That's why the king has made me a baker. However, inside of them, they received the thought of trusting in themselves. In order for Satan to work in us, <laughs> Satan from the beginning does not give you the heart to commit adultery. Satan from the beginning does not give you the heart to murder. The first the heart that Satan put inside of you is to make you to trust in yourself. I am good at driving. Oh, I am good at cooking. <laughs> I am good at what else? <laughs> I am more handsome than Pastor Safari. <laughs> Safari. Everyone, Satan, in the beginning, put the heart of trusting in myself. Although you may be, you know, not good in like 99 things, <laughs> if you have a one thing that you are good in, with that one thing, <laughs> Satan is making you to trust in yourself. <laughs> I am living for the gospel. You know, I lived for the gospel for 30 years. Everyone, Satan is putting the heart to trust in myself. And those people who are trusting in themselves, even though now he might lead you to commit crime, you cannot help but commit crime. Everyone, do you know who goes to prison? Those people who go to prison are the ones who are trusting in themselves. Even though I steal money, I won't get cut. Even if you can't trust in yourself, uh, if I do this, definitely I'll get cut. Then can you commit crime? No, you can't. But because you think uh, other people might get cut, but for me, I won't get cut. I'll be all right. I'll be fine. One of the big headaches of the you know, prison service is those people who get discharged, they come back to the prison. Why? Because in the prison, instead of repenting, they are thinking, 
Ah, at that time, oh, wakati ule, as I was robbing, I didn't put on the gloves. Ah, si kuweza kuvaa, uh, if gloves. I had only put on the gloves, Kama gloves, then I might have not get cut. Laba singe shikwa. Evan, you understand, right? Nelewa. Yes, though they got caught and they're in the prison, Hata na shikwa na wako gereza, they still trust in themselves, so they are thinking, ah, if I have done this, then I wouldn't get caught. They go outside, commit crime again, and then come back to prison again. And yet, again, they think, I won't get caught. At that time, I put on the gloves, but I did not hide the knife properly. You understand, right? In that way, although people, they get discharged, unless they change their hearts, repent from the heart of trusting in themselves. Their life cannot endlessly just live the life of a miserable life. The butler and the baker had the heart to trust in themselves. I am a good butler. I am good at making wine. Now eventually with that heart of trusting in themselves, now they kindled the fire of the king. One day the king he he uh, he ordered the wine. And then the butler he thought. Ah, this wine. Ah, he Ah, this wine is a special wine that comes from Chile. Ah, he The more you drink it, it will get you very healthy. So the butler thought about the king and for the king he brought this wine unto the king his majesty here is the cup of wine he tasted the wine hey butler I don't like this wine you bring the wine that I used to drink in front of the majesty oh yes his majesty in front of the king you cannot even show your back do you know such thing so when they go away from the king they have to walk out like this so he moved out and then he was thinking king what does he know about wine although he doesn't know anything about wine if he just receive and take the wine that I give him then it will be fine why is he complaining about wine. Next time, the king, he was asking for wine. Once again, he brought the wine that he wanted. Everyone, do you understand what I'm talking about? So the king, he said again, Hey, butler! Not this one! The one that I used to drink. I used to bring, I told you to bring that wine. Do you understand? The next time, what kind of wine do you think he might have brought? The same, same wine that he wanted to bring to the king. Now he said, the fire of the king. Hey, if you cannot bring the wine that I want, if you cannot receive my words, how can you work for me? Get out! He entered into the prison. And Baker entered into the prison. Yes, they must have some incident. But inwardly, because of the heart of trusting in themselves. Last time, 
Pastor Homok Lee. Homok Lee. He built a huge build uh, the chapel in city called Masan. Aliweza kujenga jengo kubwa la kanisa kwa mji unaoitwa Masan. And then his relatives came. Na hivyo wale watu wake wa karibu wakaja. And his mother came. Na pia mamake akaja. And so they all said, "Wow." Na wote wakao nasema, "Wow." Homok Lee. Homok Lee. You built a very big church. Umejenga kanisa kubwa. So in his heart, he had the heart to feel proud. Alikuwa na moyo wa majivuno. One time, wakati mmoja, Pastor Park he came to check. Mchungaji Park akaja kutazama. As he was the touring and going around. Na alipokuwa anazunguka akiangalia, all of a sudden, mara hiyo tu, Pastor Park asked the Pastor Lee. Mchungaji Park amuliza huyu mchungaji Lee. Excuse me, Pastor Lee. Eh, tafadhali mchungaji Lee. By any chance, kwa nafasi yote, did but, you have the heart to feel proud of building this church je ushawa ikuwa na humu moyo ya kujiamini kwamba umejenga ikanisa and then he said yes pastor anasema ndio mchungaji i am building such a big church how can you not be proud ah nimejenga kanisa kubwa aina hii unawezaje kuwa usikuwa na moyo mbaya yes pastor hivyo akasema ndio mchungaji all of the sudden ingawaje humtumishi Hey Pastor Lee, hey, mchungaji Lee. If you receive that heart, ukupokea huo moyo, then you will be destroyed. Basi utaharibiwa. He was so surprised. Alishangaa sana. He thought, alidhani, it's okay. Ni sawa. It's fine. Kusawa. You're constructing a such a big building. Ya kama nimejenga jengo kubwa aina hii. How can you not have a heart feeling proud? Unawezaje kosa kuwa na moyo wa kujivunia? You understand what I'm talking about? Naelewa kile ninasema. This time I went to Swaziland. Wakati huu nilienda Swaziland. Pastor Park he preached the gospel to the king. Mchungaji Park alihubiri injili kwa mfano. And then he came back. Na alipokuwa anarudi. And then he met with the missionaries. Na alipokutana na missionaries. And told the missionaries. Na akamwambia missionary. Missionaries. Na missionary. Truly I am filthy, dirty and a wicked person. Hakika mimi ni mchafu na mtu mwovu. But I don't understand why God is using me to preach this gospel. Lakini sielewi kwamba Mungu anatumia mimi kuhubiri injili. He went and preached the gospel to the mother of the king and came back. Na siku moja akaenda kuhubiria injili mama mfame na akarudi. He said missionaries. Anasema wa missionary. I am dirty, wicked and filthy. Mimi ni mchafu na mwovu. But I don't understand why God is using such a person like me to preach this gospel. Lakini sielewi Mungu anatumia mtu aina hii kuhubiri injili. He went and preached the gospel to the princess na came back. Na akaenda kuhubiri injili kwa wale watu wakuu na karudi. Missionaries. A missionary. I am filthy and dirty and wicked. Mimi ni mchafu na mwovu. I don't understand why God is using such a person like me to Lakin preach this gospel. Sielewi kwa nini Mungu anatumia mtu aina mimi kuhubiri hii injili. Even in his heart. Kila mmoja wewe ni ndani mwa wake. He does not tolerate and receive even a little bit of our heart of trusting in himself. Yaani havumili na pia kupokea huo moyo wa kujiamini yeye mwenyewe. Ya kwamba niko sawa. I am good. Ni niko sawa. Yes, so I may not be good in those things, but this one I am good. Je, siwezi kuwa mzuri katika mambo haya lakini oh, I have been serving the gospel for last 20 years. Na nimehubiri injili kwa muda wa miaka 20. I've been serving the gospel for last 10 years. Na pia nimetumikia injili kwa muda wa miaka 10. One time wakati mmoja there was this one evangelist named Dale Moody. Kulikuwa kuna huyu mwanjilisti mmoja anaitwa Dale Moody. He's from Chicago. Yeye anatoka Chicago. And then at the huge crusade and he preached the gospel so powerfully. Na kwa mkutano mkubwa akahubiri hii injili kwa nguvu. After preaching the word, na baada kuhubiri neno, he came down the podium. Akashuka chini ya jukwaa. And then one sister ran to. Na hivyo dada mmoja akamkimbilia. Dale Moody. Ah Dale Moody. Reverend Dear Moody. Eh, kasisi Dear Moody. Today I was listening to your sermon. Leo nilikuwa nasikiliza mahubiri yako. Your sermon was so graceful. Yaani mahubiri yako ilikuwa ni ya kuneemisha. Your sermon was so powerful. Na pia mahubiri yako ilikuwa ni ya nguvu. It has changed my heart. Imeweza kubadilisha moyo wangu. And then evangelist Reverend Dear Moody he told her. Na huyu mwanjilisti Dear Moody akamwambia I'm sorry sister. Asamahani dada. Before you came, kabla unijie, another has come. Mwingine tayari amekuja and also told me the same. Na pia kaniambia hivyo hivyo. She was surprised. Alishangaa. Because from the far distance, kwa sababu kwa hatua mrefu, she was looking at the Reverend Dear Moody and ran to him. Alikuwa anamtazama huyu Dear Moody na akamkimbilia. She hasn't seen anybody. Na hajaona mtu yeyote. Oh, really? 
I thought I was the only one. Who is that? His name is Mr. Satan. Everyone. Satan is putting the heart inside of us to trust in myself. I am alright. I am fine. Oh, I am good in this. Butler and the baker received that thought in their hearts and then began to trust in themselves. Now they have committed evil before the king. And they went to the prison. However, for the butler, while he was in the prison, God has bestowed grace upon him. And then he was able to come to repentance for his heart. Let us open to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40. Starting from verse 9. And then the chief of butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me. And the First ten, and in the vine were three branches, so it was as though it budded, its blossom shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Let us read verse 11 all together. Verse 11. With a loud voice. Sauti ku. Ready, go. Yes. Here, in ha his hands, hapa, mikononi mwa, mikononi mwake, he had Pharaoh's cup. Na kikombe cha Pharaoh. Says, and I took the grapes and pressed them into the Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Nasema, uh, ni he had a dream. And in his dream, it says, In my dream, a vine was before me. Everyone, what is a vine? In the book of John says, I am the vine, right? Yes, this vine is talking about Jesus. It is representing the word. It is talking about the word of God. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the word of God who came in the flesh. Ever before, he did not only have a vine before him. He had a vine. He had a vine. But not only having a vine before him, he did not only have a vine, but he also had his own thoughts in front of him. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, he's supposed to have only a vine before him. He should have only the word before him. He should only live the life of only believing in the word. But in front of him, he had a vine and also his thoughts. His experience. His feelings. His ideas. His judgments. It's not that he doesn't come unto him. His thoughts are there. But if you are the one who is having a vine before you, okay, my thought is telling me like this. But what did the word say? 
Lakini je neno unasema nini? You are able to draw a line. Unaweza kuchora umstari. Between what is of me? Yaani kati ya kile ambacho ni cha mimi and what the word of God says. Na kile ambacho neno la Mungu inasema. Even according to my thoughts. Na kutegemea mawazo yangu. I am a sinner, right? Mimi ni mwenye dhambi, si ndio? According to my experience. Na kutegemea ujuzi wangu. I am a sinner, right? Mimi ni mwenye dhambi, si ndio? According to my experience. Kutegemea ujuzi wangu. I am a sinner. Mimi ni mwenye dhambi. But in terms of salvation, katika hali ya wokovu, what do you believe? Unaamini nini? Do you believe in this? Je, unaamini katika hii? Or do you believe in this? Au unaamini katika hii? You only stand before a vine in terms of salvation. Yaani katika hali ya wokovu unasimama tu mbele ya mzabibu. How do we live our spiritual life? Na tunaishije maisha yetu ya rohoni? We live the spiritual life of mixing these two things together. Tunaishi maisha ya rohoni tukiwa tunachanganya haya mambo yote mawili pamoja. Whenever I want to believe in myself, wakati ambapo nataka kujiamini mimi mwenyewe, I go and believe in myself. Si kwamba najiamini mimi mwenyewe. And then whenever I go and want to believe in the word, na wakati ambapo nataka kuamini neno, I go and believe in the word. Naamini katika lile neno. This is not believing in the word at all. Lakini hii sio kutoamini kutokuamini katika neno peke yake. In this way you cannot have a true salvation. Na katika hii njia huwezi kuona wokovu kweli. In this way you cannot also have true spiritual life. Na njia na hii huwezi kuona maisha ya rohoni ya kweli. However for baller, ingawaje huyu mnyoshaji, ah, I've been trusting in myself. Wewe nimekuwa nikijiamini mimi mwenyewe. I've been trusting in my own thoughts. Nimekuwa nikiamini mawazo yangu mwenyewe. I've been trusting in my view of what I see. Nimekuwa nikijiamini mtazamo wangu kwa sababu ya hiyo. Kile ninachosikia. What I feel. Kile ambacho nahisi. Ah, when I live like that I went to prison. Na napofuata mawazo yangu nilia gerezani. My life was destroyed because I trusted in myself. Wewe niweza kuharibiwa kwa sababu nilijiamini mimi mwenyewe. In the prison he was able to clearly throw away his himself. Ndani ya gereza aliweza kujitupilia mbali ye mwenyewe. A vine was before me. Na hivyo mzabibu ukawa mbele yangu. Do you understand what I'm trying to talk about? Je, mnaelewa kile ambacho naelezea? In the prison, gerezani, he was able to clearly realize that ah uh, until now living the life of mixing the word and mixing my thoughts aliweza kutambua kwamba nimeishi katika hali ya kuchanganya mawazo yangu na neno la Mungu the end result has only placed me in the prison na tukio la mwisho aliweza kunifanya niingie gerezani he was able to draw a very clear line to that kwa hivyo aliweza kuweka mstari ule wazi how was he able to place a line to that basi aliwezaje kuweka mstari ule wazi ajua hiyo how are you able to draw a line to that unawezaje kuchora mstari ajua hiyo there is a tool kuna kisilaha there is a tool yani kuna chombo fulani there is a tool to draw a line yani kuna chombo fulani ambayo unaweza chora mstari what is that hiyo ni nini what is the tool hiyo chombo ni gani to give you a line yani kupewa wewe mstari tool that gives you a line yani kupewa wewe mstari it's called the word inaitwa neno there is nothing that can give you the most accurate line as the word of god hakuna kitu chochote kile ambacho kinaweza kupea mstari ule wazi kama maneno la mungu huyo mwenyeshaji stood before the word alisimama mbele ya neno and na saw the accurate result na kaona tukio halisi lenyewe following my thought la kufuata mawazo yangu that word comes out in the book of romans chapter 8 hilo neno linatoka katika kitabu cha warumi mlango wa 8 let's open it up Tufungue. Romans. Warumi. Chapter 8. Mlango wa 8. Romans chapter 8. Warumi mlango wa 8. Verse 5. Mstari wa 5. Let's read one verse by one verse all together. Tusome mstari mmoja hadi mwingine si sote pamoja. What is a tool that draws a line in your heart? Sasa ni gani ile ambayo inachora mstari ndani ya moyo wako? What is it? Ni nini ambayo inachora mstari ndani ya moyo wako? Word of God. Word of God. Nena Romans mwa. chapter 8, Warumi mlango wa 8, verse 5, mstari wa 5. Let us all read together. Tusome si sote pamoja. Are you ready? Je mko tayari? Ready, go. It says for those who live according to the 
Nasema kwa maana wale wafuatao mwili what is to live according to the flesh? Kuishi kufuata mwili nini? What is it? Hiyo ni nini? Following my flesh. Having a party. Kuwa na sherehe, drinking liquor, kunywa pombe, smoking, kuvuta doing drugs not coming to church and uh, trying to attend service through tv Oops. Ever, is that living according to the flesh what is living according to the flesh following my own thought. It says for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Set their minds on the things of the flesh. Thinking about money, thinking about jobs, educating my children. Is it setting my minds on the things of the flesh? No, fixing my thoughts on my own thoughts, on what I see, what I feel, my heart, my emotions, my judgment. He says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now here it says, but those who live according to the spirit. Those who live according to the spirit. Yes, so what is to live according to the spirit? Living according to the word. Yes. Dio. I think we only have good students. Actually, I should ask the students in the back. <laughs> yes, usually. <coughs> Anyways, what is to live according to the Spirit? Only believing in the Word. It says, for those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Setting their minds only on the things of the Spirit. Everyone repeat after me. Setting their minds. Setting their minds. Once again, setting their minds on the Word. Those who are of flesh setting their minds on what? On my thoughts. What about of those spirits? Setting my minds on what? On the word of God. Do you understand what I mean? So, who are the spiritual people? Sometimes in the church, we say, Wow, wow. You are very spiritual. Have you ever heard something like that? I mean, they didn't tell you, but you probably heard someone telling other people, right? Have you heard it? Wow, that sister, she's so spiritual. Oh, that brother, he's very spiritual. Have you heard something like that? Referring to others, right? Not myself. <laughs> what is to be spiritual? Everyone being spiritual is only believing in the word of God. Ah, that brother is very fleshly. No, we are not talking about drinking, Sasa smoking, or such. Falling asleep. But, lakini, fleshly means following my own thoughts. Insisting on my own thoughts. Insisting on my judgment. Insisting on my own feelings and emotions. Now, later, this Butler had to realize that. Through Romans chapter 8, through the word, he was able to draw a line in his heart. Verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death. 
kwa kuwa nia ya mwili ni mauti. Ah, following my own thoughts. Ah, nikifuata mawazo yangu. Not believing in the word of God. Yaani nisipoamini neno la Mungu. Ah, following my own thoughts. Nafuata mawazo yangu mwenyewe. The Bible says. Biblia inasema the end of result is death. Ah, mwisho ni mauti. It says support to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Nisema bali nia ya roho ni uzima na amani. Ah, only believing in the word of God. Ah, kuamini tu katika neno is life and peace. Ni uzima na amani. Sema amen. Sema amen. That's what he was able to realize. Hivyo ndivyo ambavyo aliweza kutambua. Where? Hivyo. In the prison. Ndani ya gereza. You understand what I mean? Naelewa kile ina maanisha. Ah, the reason why my life is so miserable. Ah, sababu maisha yangu ni maisha ambayo ni mashaka. Yes, not because of my mistakes. Sio kusababu ya makosa yangu. Not because not because of my hourly actions or behaviors. Sio kusababu ya tabia zangu na upungufu wangu. Oh, I am miserable. Ah, niko mtu ambaye ni mashaka. Niko na ugumu. I am sad. Niko na huzuni. Because I followed my own kwa sababu nilifuata mawazo yangu mwenyewe. The Bible is clearly telling us about living the life of following the thoughts. Biblia inatuelezea kwa uwazi jinsi ya kufuata mawazo yetu wenyewe. Carnally minded is? Yaani nia ya kufuata mwili ni death. Ni mauti. First <coughs> seven. Mstari wa saba. Because the carnal mind is enmity against against God kwa kuwa ile nia ya mwili ni wadui juu ya Mungu for it is not subject to the law of God nor indeed can be kwa maana haitii sheria ya Mungu wala haiwezi kutii verse 8 wa so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God wale wafuatao mwili hawezi kumpendeza Mungu everyone what is to be in the flesh sasa kila mmoja ni kuwa katika mwili ni nini to be my own thoughts kufuata mawazo yangu to be my own feelings yani kuwa katika hisia zangu to be mwenyewe. my own emotions yani kufuata hisia zangu mimi mwenyewe but not lakini si in the word of God katika neno la Mungu as i was having fellowship nilipokuwa na ushirika this word clearly drew a line in my heart nilipokuwa na ushirika hili neno liliweza kuchora mstari ulio wazi ndani ya moyo wangu first 13 na mstari wa 13 can we read all together naweza soma sisi sote pamoja first 13 mstari wa 13 are you ready je mko tayari let us read verse 13 tusome mstari wa 13 all together sisi sote pamoja ready go tayari anza It says for if you live according to the flesh you will die. Nasema kwa maana kama tukiishi kwa kufuata mambo ya mwili mwataka kufa. For if you live according to the flesh. Maana tukiishi kwa kufuata mambo ya mwili. What is to live according to the flesh? Kuishi kufuata mambo ya mwili nini? To dye my hair? Yaani kutengeneza nywele yangu to you know yearn to make money yani kutamani kutengeneza pesa to live the life of whatever i want to live yani kuishi yale maisha ambayo nataka kuishi what is to live according to the flesh kuishi kufuata mwili ni nini to live kuishi according to my thoughts ni kuishi kufuata mawazo yangu if you live according to your thoughts ukiishi ukifuata mawazo yako the bible says biblia inasema you will die utakufa do you believe in this ndio naamini katika hii do you believe in this ndio naamini hii and yet na bado you follow your thought right nafuata mawazo yako si ndio in korean version katika version ya korea it says if you live according to the flesh inasema ukishi kwa kufuata mwili it says you will surely die inasema kwa uhakika utakufa this word drew a line is out of my heart hili neno liweza kuchora mstari ulio wazi ndani mwa ah the bible says that if i follow my thoughts ah biblia inasema kwamba nikifuata mawazo yangu i will surely die hakika nitakufa in my heart ndani ya mwa wangu i had difficulties nilikuwa na ugumu i had sufferings nilikuwa na mateso i had sadness nilikuwa na huzuni i had problem in my heart nilikuwa na matatizo ndani mwa wangu even today i cannot talk about even up to the baker na leo hata siwezi kuongea hata kwa juu ya huyo amokaji let me only speak about the butler wacha tuniongee tu juu ya huyo mnyeshaji actually i was you know uh, you know writing an article about this hakika nilikuwa naandika jarida juu ya hii after writing this article baada ya kuandika hii jarida pastor steve he came to me mchungaji steve akanijia pastor steve uh, pastor johan mchungaji johan in our church kanisani mwetu there is this one sister so who has leukemia Uh, kuna huyu dada mmoja ambaye hako na ugonjwa wa leukemia. please come and pray for her? Tafadhali unaweza kuja na muombe. Oh, leukemia? Eh, hey, leukemia? You know, I am very related to 
that disease. So I really wanted to come and have fellowship together with that sister. I met that sister. Sister! Dada! Leukemia is not a problem at all. If you truly only believe in the word, you can be healed from leukemia. And then I opened the word in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And Sister, Dada, what did the Bible say? By his stripes, you are healed. Jesus did not only die for our sins, but he has also died to heal you from your sins, also to heal you from your leukemia, your disease, your sickness, your thought is saying, I am sick, I am going to die soon, I will die, I will die. But what did the Bible say, sister? By his stripes, we are healed. Sister, did you receive salvation? Yes, Pastor. Are you righteous? Yes, Pastor. You still make mistakes, right? Say my amen. Say my amen. All of you are saying amen. I think you are hearing me, right? Yes, maybe we can even save the electricity bill you know, by turning it off. <laughs> Say my amen. Say my amen. Everyone, are you righteous? Yeah. Can you go to heaven? Do you have any doubt about that? Yeah. As much as you have no doubt that you are righteous, with the same perfection, he has also healed you as well. Sindio, you are righteous, right? As much as you are righteous, he has perfectly healed you as well. Afterwards, I laid my hands on her. And then I pray for her. Sister, Dada, I pray for her. As I was praying, I remember the, you know, the, the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. I forgot all of a sudden. Oh. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. I laid my hands on her and then I prayed. 
Lord, Bwana. you said to rejoice always. Nasema, siku zote. Lord, Bwana. you said you rejoice in the Lord always. Nasema, katika Bwana siku zote. I believe that if you said rejoice always, Na, kwa mba, kwa mba, siku zote. I believe that this is your heart Na, towards kwa... This sister. I believe that it is the will of God who wants to make her to rejoice always. I believe that that is the will of God. Lord, heal her so that she may rejoice always. As I was praying, God asked me a question. Johan, you pray like that. But do you believe in that word? No. Now, now you will think, uh, I will never invite Pastor Johan to pray for me, right? <laughs> he said it, but he doesn't believe in it. But listen carefully. He asked me, Johan, you pray like that, but do you believe in that word? No. La. But Johan, Johan, how did Pastor Park believe in that word? Because the Bible said to rejoice. Pastor Park, he just rejoiced. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Pastor Park, God told him to rejoice. There's no reason for him to rejoice. For he rejoiced. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. That time when he received the word, I was there in Korea. All of a sudden, around at 7.30, he came to his office. And obviously, we were waiting for him in his office. And then he said, Hey, pastors, this morning I woke up and I was reading the Bible and God told me to rejoice. So I rejoiced like this. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. In our heart. Finally, you are out of your mind. But now, worst thing gets even worse. He says, let's rejoice together. So all the pastors who are around me, they began to laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. So, Hivyo, I had to also rejoice. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. So silly, right? Hivyo, ni but this is the difference of the heart. Pastor Park, Park, when he is told by the word lake, to rejoice, kufrahia, he rejoices. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. When you are told to rejoice, hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Next time, <laughs> how can you just laugh? Ha, ha, ha. Hey, so silly. Do that in Sunday school, but not here. We are adults. In that way, we are rejecting the word of God. On that day, after I prayed, I opened the Bible. Sister! Dada, let's fellowship again. Open the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. What did the Bible say? Rejoice in the Lord. Always again I say rejoice. The reason why God he has mentioned it two times is because it is very important for you to rejoice. Sister, you have leukemia. Can you rejoice? No, I can't. But what did the word say? Rejoice. Rain. So let's rejoice. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Sister, can you rejoice like this? She said, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Not like that. Come on. Rejoice like this. Ho, ho, ho. Ha, ha, ha. So she said, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Everyone. Our Nairobi church brothers and sisters. If God tell you to rejoice, you have no condition to rejoice. You have no reason to rejoice. Instead, 
Yake, you are sad. Huzuni, you are difficult. Ugumu, but lakini, when he tell you to rejoice, ufraie, can you rejoice? Can you rejoice? Shall we rejoice? One, two, three. You are so fake. Uh, whether it's fake or not, the fact that we are able to just rejoice. You look so silly. But when it tells you to rejoice, ha 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 ha. Very easy, right? On that day. Yo siku. I was so surprised. Niliweza kushangaa sana. Ah. Ah. Believing in the word is easy. Yaani kuamini katika neno ni rahisi. If God tells you to rejoice. Mungu akikwambia kwamba ufurahie. Just rejoice. Ufurahie. If God tells you to rise, take up that bed and walk. Ya Mungu akikwambia kwamba simama na jitika gari lako uende. Just rise. Asisimama. Rise. Simama. Rise. Simama. <laughs> you see, in actuality, there is a problem, right? Yeah, <laughs> Rise. Simama. It took him five seconds. Yeah, I'm to a second. Rise. Simama. <laughs> Have a seat. Ka. Even if God tells you to rise, Mumba kumbao simama. Just rise, rise. Simama too. Everyone rise. <laughs> Very simple. Iraisi. On that day. Lakini ah. yosiku. Ah. Believing in the word is so easy. Uamini katika neno ni rahisi. The Bible says uh, rejoice. Biblia inasema kwamba furaini. Just rejoice. Si furai. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. If he tells you to rise. Aikwambia simama. Just rise. Simama. It's so easy. Irahisi. Rise. Simama. Me? 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 In front of so many people like this? Mbele ya watu wengi jinsi hii? In the middle of the sermon? Yaani katikati ya ibada? Remember, what is that? Hiyo ni nini? Your thoughts. Ni mawazo yako. Your experience. Ujuzi wako. You understand what I'm talking about? Naelewa kile ninasema. That is your thoughts. Hiyo ni wazo lako. That is your experience. Hiyo ni ujuzi wako. This is I. Upande huu. Rise. Simama ni. Kaeni. Is it difficult? Rejoice always. This I rejoice always. I don't know what those people who are watching us on TV are going to think about right now. <laughs> Maybe they might think, oh, I should never go to Good News Mission Nairobi Church. <laughs> Everyone, receiving the word, is it difficult or is it easy? Yes, it doesn't make sense to you yeah, to rise in the middle of the sermon. But if it tells you to rise, rise, he will do the work according to the word. I said, ha, 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 with the sister. On the way back, in my car, I received a phone call. Pastor, you know that problem? It's solved. I was so happy and thankful and excited. Say my amen. Amen. Everyone, just because I don't have enough time, I can't just say everything. Everyone. Until now, I don't know how you lived. But for me, I had the word and I had my thoughts. Like this. If I want to follow my thoughts, I stick to my thoughts. If I want to follow my, the word, I follow the word. The Bible says, if you live according to the flesh, you will surely die. I decided to draw a line. I will not trust in you. Just go have a seat. You know what I mean, right? 
a vine was before me. Mzabibu ulikuwa mbele yangu. Amen. Amen. Everyone. Kila mmoja wenu. I hope all of you. Natumai ninyi wote. Can set only the word of God in your heart. Unaweza tu kusimamisha neno la Mungu tu ndani yenu. All right. My thought tells me like this. Ndio wazo langu nanambia jinsi hii. What did the Bible say? Lakini je Biblia inasema nini? My experience is telling me like this. Ujuzi wangu unanambia mimi jinsi hii. What did the Bible say? Lakini je Biblia inasema nini? I hope all of you can set only this word in front of you. Natumai nyote mkoze kusimamisha hili neno mbele yenu. Whatever he tells you to do it, just do it. Lolote analokuambia fanya. That word will do the work. Hilo neno litafanya kazi. That word will solve my problem. Hilo neno litatatua shida yangu. word will also solve your problem as well. Hilo neno ambalo litatatua shida yangu vile vile litatatua shida yako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we think about these aspects. Tunapofikiria kuhusu hili jambo. Let us all close our eyes. Sisi wote tufunge macho yetu. And pray before God. Naombe mbele za Mungu. Seeking for his grace and his mercy. Tafute neema yake na rehema zake. So that only that vine, only that word will be before me. Ili homza bibu na neno tu peke yake liwe mbele yangu. Let us all pray. Sisi wote tuombe. And briefly. Na kufupi. Heavenly Father God. Baba yetu mbinguni. And for a butler kwa huyu mnyeshaji he had a vine before him alikuwa na mzabibu mbele yake he said only the word before him aliweza kusimamisha tu neno mbele yake lord we need your grace na bwana tumehitaji neno yako so that we can only set the word of god before us lord ili tukapate kusimamisha neno la mungu mbele yetu bwana lord you may bless each and one of our brothers and sisters bwana ukapate kubariki kila ndugu na dada wetu and so that they may clearly draw a line between my thoughts and the word of god ili ukapate kutora mstari ulio wazi kati ya mwazi yangu na neno la mungu lord lead us bwana utuongoze help us tukusaidie humble our heart before the word of god unyekeze mietu mbele ya neno la mungu make our heart like children's heart before the word of we, god uweze kufanya mietu kuwa mioyo kama watoto wadogo mbele ya neno la the word will work naamini kwamba neno litafanya kazi we give everything into your hands na pia na kila kitu mikononi mwako in the name of jesus we pray katika jina la yesu tumeomba amen amen